Welcome, ladies, lords, and knights of the rectangular table to your medieval adventure. Today, we will be learning about the medieval time period, castles, and dragons. We will be making cardboard castles, catapults, and pipe cleaner dragons. So let's get started. What was the medieval times and when was it? The medieval times, also known as the Middle Ages, occurred between the 5th and 15th century. It was a time period that contributed to the fall of the Western Empire. In the Middle Ages, people lived in villages called manors. Each manor had a castle. There were hierarchies in these villages. The king was at the top, then the noblemen, the bishops, lords, and at the bottom, the villagers. The villagers during this time period were known as peasants. The villagers worked the land and fought against intruders to protect the king in the castle. The villagers often had very little in means of food and resources. They didn't own their own land. Instead, they were permitted to live on it by their king. Skilled villagers were called craftsmen. The women cooked, cleaned, raised children, tended the gardens, weaved and spun clothing, hunted and fought in battles. They also had jobs as blacksmiths and merchants. Women that were thought to be healers often made medicine out of herbs and different things from the garden. They were thought to have magical powers and were said to be witches. During this time period, there were different types of residences or homes. The king and his family and royal subjects lived in the castles. The wealthy lived in manor houses that had multiple rooms, paved floors, tapestries hung on the walls to keep the cold out, and large kitchens made for cooking. The villagers lived in very small homes with one or two rooms and the floors were made of dirt. The walls were often very thin and provided very little in terms of shelter. These homes were very easily destroyed during windstorms and battles. The clothing the villagers wore were handmade. The villagers wore dark clothing made from wool and shoes made from leather. Those that were wealthy wore much fancier clothes. Their clothes were made out of animal fur, hides, linens, and silks. Food was not very plentiful during the, this time period. The villagers ate dark bread and ate onions and garlic, as well as herbs that they grew. The king and his family were well fed. They ate white bread. The king and his family also had meat in the forms of mutton and beef, as well as vegetables grown in their garden by the villagers. Bread was a staple food in every household and food was preserved by using salt as there were no fridges or electricity during this time period. There were many battles fought during the medieval times. Villagers, knights, and royals fought many battles to stay, to stay safe in their village. Battles against the castles were common. Many battles ended once the castles were surrounded, cutting off access to supplies and reinforcements. This was called the siege. The village was protected by everyone and the goal was to keep intruders out of the castle and away from the royal family. They used catapults as a means of protecting the village and keeping intruders away from the gates of the manor. They often flung rocks, objects, manure, and more to keep people out. The villagers protected their homes and the outer borders while the knights protected the castle gates and entrances. Let's make a catapult. 
Today we will be making catapults. A catapult looks like this and works like this. So let's get started. First, take your popsicle sticks and stack five high. Once you have five high, take an elastic, whoops, take an elastic and wrap it around one end. You might have to stack them a couple times, as you can see. Wrap the elastic around a few times so it's nice and tight, flip it over, and put an elastic around the opposite side. So there you go. Take one extra popsicle stick and peel apart one popsicle stick from the group and slip your other popsicle stick in between. You'll want your four popsicle sticks on the top and one on the bottom and push it up about a quarter of the way. Next, take your spoon and your last popsicle stick and place the popsicle stick at the back of the spoon. Take one elastic and wrap it around the top a few times so that your popsicle stick is held on. I'm gonna try to wrap it around one more time. There we go. If it breaks, that's okay. We have a couple extras. So now you have your two parts and you want to place your spooned popsicle stick on the top and wrap one elastic around the bottom. Whew, there we go. So hold it nice and tight and wrap a few times. You might have to adjust your popsicle sticks as you go, but that's okay. Next, you want to make a crisscross around the center. So take an elastic nice and wide in your hand and wrap it around, twist and wrap. Make sure your elastic is all the way around on both sides and then do the same to the other side. Wrap around, twist all the way. And there you go. You have your catapult and it's ready to play. Going. many castles built during the medieval times and some of these castles still stand today. The UK holds Europe's oldest castle and is still inhabited by people today. It's known as Windsor Castle. This is also the UK's largest castle. There are over 1500 castles in England. Prague Castle is the largest castle. It is 570 meters in length with a width of 130 meters. Wales has more castles per square mile than any other place in Europe. England has over 800 castle spots where visible remains and castles still stand today. Over 300 of these sites are standing castles. The UK holds more castle sites than England. In the medieval times, castles were built of wood or stone. Castles or castle walls were typically built up to two meters thick. 
The king spent 40% of his money on building and maintaining his castles. Castle bathrooms were known as garter robes that contained a toilet hole which traveled down to the moat. These toilet tunnels were excellent places to gain entry to a castle during a siege. A siege is a part of a battle when the castle is surrounded. This is the best way to force the king and his family to surrender as it, cut off, it cuts off supplies and reinforcements to the inside of the castle. In order to survive, the king must surrender the castle. Most castles have secret entrances called a postern. A postern could be used by invaders to gain entrance and attack from both the inside and the outside of the castle to overtake it. This is also another way in which most battles were won. Many medieval castles are still standing today. Let's build a medieval castle. For this activity, you'll need a box. We pre-cut our box with, and you'll, if you make your box at home, you'll need an adult to help you cut all of these little squares around the top. And of course, to cut your drawbridge. You'll also need uh, two paper towel rolls, a couple pieces of white paper, a round item to cut a circle with, a glue stick to add on some windows and different things, and some paint and paint brushes. If you're cutting everything out from scratch, you'll need scissors and a tool to draw and trace with. First, let's make our towers. To make your tower, you'll need two paper towel rolls, the empty ones, obviously. So when you are making these, this is what you want them to look like. So first you want to measure how tall you need your tower to be. So in comparison to your box, you want it to sit about two inches higher. So now that I can see where that is, I'm going to take my scissors push down so that I have a nice flat surface and cut across. And now I have my two pieces. I'll cut this one in half again so that I have a little bit, I have one for each tower. And I have two pieces there. To make your tower, you want to place your uh, paper towel roll on top and you want to mark where your paper towel roll lines up with the corner. So see, I have that here. And now I can hold this here and I want to mark where my paper towel roll meets the top of the box. Now that I have that, I will cut on the line that I drew all the way up to the top of where I marked. And then do the same on the other side, all the way up need a little bit more there. There we go. And then you have this lovely piece that slips over top and slides down to the bottom. Do the same thing with the smaller pieces that we cut. Measure, mark each side. And I'll get this side too. And then you'll cut small slits, maybe about halfway up, and slide. 
slide it on top. There we are. So that's how you make your tower. And I will add my other tower on. Slide it in all the way down. Maybe I'll use my other one. That doesn't seem to fit this one as well. Slide it down all the way to the bottom. And then we'll add our second part of our tower. Now that you have your box, we're ready to paint. Now it's time to paint your castle. I chose gray to paint my castle because it reminds me of medieval castles. To paint, slide all the way up. You want to get as much done and covered as possible. That's why we chose a bigger paintbrush all the way through. You want to make sure you paint the outside of your drawbridge. Get all the way to the bottom. And then get your other sides. To make your the tops of your towers with flags, you'll need to start off with a giant circle. We chose something that was nice and round and a fair size. Use a marker or a pencil to go all the way around and create your circle. Next, cut out your circle all the way around, following your line. Once you have your circle, fold it in half all the way across, press down, and then cut along the line. To make your circle, or to make your tower top, you'll need to fold in the two flat edges all the way around. Take a piece of tape and tape them together. It's falling apart on me. That's okay. Me too. There we are. And you have a nice cone shape. And do the same with the other one. Fold over, find that nice line, and tape down. Just like that. To make your flags, fold a piece of paper in half. You just need a very small piece and place your popsicle, or not your popsicle stick, your toothpick inside, and find a nice height for your flag. I like about an inch, and then cut across. There you go. And then I'm going to cut this in half. I have a nice flag shape here. And then I'll do the same thing again. Place your toothpick inside, cut in half, cut all the way up. Well, my toothpick's a little bit in the way. There we go. Nice flag. To finish it off, we have to glue the flags to the toothpicks. So let's put those ones over here and we'll start with this one. Take a glue stick 
and glue one side all the way. Place your toothpick in the center, fold over. Try to line up your edges the best you can and stick down. Same thing with the other side, glue. Place your toothpick in the center, fold over. If you wanna make your flag a little bit fancy, you can decorate it with markers, or you could even add a triangle cut into it so that you have a nice waving flag. Once you're finished, place your toothpick in the top and you have, you're at the top of your tower. Now it's time to make our windows. You'll need two large windows and four small windows. To draw these windows, we'll start with the large one. Draw a line, nice long line, up. Curve over at the top and round down. To make the other window, cut this one out Trace it again and then cut that one out. That way your windows are the same size. To make your smaller windows, draw a small line up, curve over at the top and straight back down. Cut this window out, trace it three times and then cut it out. Now it's time to assemble our castle. We can place our tower tops at the top with our flags on. You can have your flags facing the same direction or different directions, whatever you like. And now it's time to add our windows. So your large windows go on the front of your castle, your smaller windows, are placed on your tower. We need to glue these down. So you'll use your glue stick again. Add as much glue, get all of the edges, a little bit in the center, and find where you want to stick this down. Now that your window's on, find your other larger window and do the same thing. stick this down. You might have to move your tower over a little bit if it shifted. And now for your smaller windows. You can choose to put one or both on your towers. It's up to you how you want your tower to look. I'm going to put both on. So glue down your window. Get those edges down. Now it's time to do the opposite tower. Loop down. And last one. There we go. And your castle is complete. When people talk about the medieval times, they often refer to dragons. Dragons are mythical creatures talked about in medieval stories, as well as legends and myths. Dragons were said to have anywhere from zero to four legs, claws, scales, spikes, and wings. Dragons often resembled snakes and lizards. They were considered to be part of the reptile families. In many pictorial images, dragons resembled 
what we know today as dinosaurs. Many dragons are fictitious, but there are some reptiles that are considered to be dragons today, such as the Komodo dragon and the bearded dragons. Let's make our own dragon. All right, today we're gonna make dragons. For this craft, you're gonna need pipe cleaners and foam and scissors and a marker. First, you're gonna fold your pipe cleaner over to make your dragon's head. Squish it there. Then you're gonna wrap it around and around and around and around and around and around and around until your dragon has a head. Then you're gonna take another pipe cleaner, stick it into your dragon's head, twist these two together, and that will be the start of your dragon's neck. You go down about two inches, and if you start wrapping this one around, stick another pipe cleaner in there, wrap it around, wrap that one around a bunch, stick it through there. Then you can take another pipe cleaner, stick it through his body, and pull it out on the other side. If you fold this one in half, you can twist it. Leave your dragon with some feet and then do the same on the other side. And then take another pipe cleaner, do it for his back legs. other leg. And then your dragon is going to need a tail so you can wrap it through his body tail like that and then use the rest of your pipe cleaner just wrap it around his body to get his tail to stay and just tuck the end in there now you have to make wings for your dragon so do this you'll take your piece of foam you can draw dragon wing with some points then you need to take your scissors to cut out your dragon wing follow all your lines Take the end of your dragon wing, fold it over like this, and you're going to cut a slit in it. So now it's a hole. And then you will slide it onto your dragon's leg so he can have a wing. And then you do the same for the other side. So 
So draw a wing. Then you do the same again, fold it over, take your slit, and slide it onto your dragon's leg, and now your dragon has wings. Your dragon will also need a tail, so if you trace the tail out on your piece of foam, get some points. And then you need to cut it out. And go all the way around all of your points, following all your lines. And then, just as you did for the wings, you'll fold the tail over. Cut a hole in it. And then, you can slide it onto your pipe cleaner, and now your dragon has a tail. Thanks for joining us today, friends. If you liked this workshop, you can, of course, try these crafts at home by following our videos. Or if you'd prefer, you can come join us on August 19th as we build castles, catapults, dragons, and more at Edinburgh Square Heritage and Cultural Center. This workshop is for kids age six to 10 and costs $27 to attend. This workshop runs from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. and we hope to see you here. Thanks for joining us today and we hope to see you soon. Bye for now, friends.